The Masks We Wear, Chapter 8, a Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction, written and narrated by Eleanor Rose. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment down below to help the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already heard the previous seven parts of the story, you can find a link to them in the description box. A few days pass, marking a week since Ladybug and I started dating, but I haven't been able to see her outside of Akuma fights. It's a shame, but for the best. I don't know how busy she is, but I can barely keep up on what I have to do already, so something would have to suffer if I saw her instead. We might be superheroes, but we aren't superhumans, I guess. But I miss her. Oh, how I miss her. I didn't know it was possible to miss a person this much after this short of a time. Why, I'm even scouring the lady blog for any signs of her. Sure, I did that before we started dating too, but it's different now. The longing has morphed into something more carnal. A need I need to satisfy. It's almost scary. Sighing, I turn off the monitor. She might be my girlfriend, but it's not healthy to be obsessed like this. Hey, Adrian, can we go to the cheese store? Plag asks, seizing the between tasks moment. Yeah, sure, buddy, I say. It's that or wallow in my lack of girlfriend time. When did I get so greedy for her? I hear shouts from inside Leon's cheese store, and almost take a hit from the door when a young woman storms out. A crest, Leon says, plastering a smile on his face when he sees me, although he looks weary. What can I do for you today? Everything okay? I ask, noticing Plag discreetly make his way behind a block of cheese. I grab a basket and set it on the counter knowing it'll be full by the time this conversation's over. Yeah, just... Yeah, just... He trails off, sighing. You don't want to know. Who was that? Uh... He adjusts some smoked gouda on the shelf. An old friend. An old friend, huh? I glance down at the basket to see about 30 euros worth of cheese piled in. I should wrap this conversation up before it gets too expensive to stay here, but I'm curious, and a bit concerned. Got into a quarrel, then? You could call it that, yeah. What happened? We were talking about the mayor, and I cracked a joke about bourgeois sounding like an old American president. Which one? bush. So I pressed it and pulled out my phone and made this. He showed me a photo of a white man with a drawn-on yellow ponytail, an obvious attempt to mock Chloe. I can't condone it, but it is pretty funny. And she stormed out? We got into a fight over me being insensitive, then I was immature, then a seven-year-old. Ah. Yeah. Well then, I pat him on the back. Good luck. Thanks. I take the now full basket to the counter and he rings me up, just in time for Plag to top off the order with another wrapper's worth of cheese before disappearing into the folds of my shirt. Oof, the scanner reads 70 euros. You're an expensive date, I mutter. What was that? Leon looks up in surprise. I've had cravings as of late, I say, a bit too enthusiastically. Well, few people buy as much cheese on a daily basis as you do. It makes me wonder how your colon's doing. Well, I've tried buying a week's worth, but it ends up costing me more. Anyway, toodles! I grab the bag and slip out. I hate dodging his questions, but I know the amount I buy is suspicious. 
It's too much even for a small family to enjoy, but... My feet feel it first. A low rumble that makes me weary from the depths of my bones. Another Akuma victim. Great. At least I'll be able to see my girlfriend. I run back inside, hoping to stash the bag of cheese before I take off. Oh no. I hear from behind me. Leon sighs and places his head in his hands. It's T.S. T.S.? The girl who ran out? Yeah. Any idea where the Akuma would be? Probably her pencil or sketch pad. What happened, exactly? She made fun of my bourgeois, and I said something along the lines of, Well, it's better than anything you've drawn before. And, well... <clears throat> Leon coughs, clearing his throat. I see. Hopefully Cat Noir saves her soon. And Ladybug? Yeah, her too. There's a bit of disdain in his voice, but I don't have the time to figure out why. Thanks for holding on to these. I'll be right back after checking if my friend is all right, I say, stepping out through the back. There's a perfect nook for transforming, which is a testament that this isn't the first time I've learned of an Akuma victim while being here. I slip out as Cat Noir, despite Plague's plea for a bite or two before I hop into the scene. I call up Ladybug as I run, not sure where the rumbles are coming from. Hello? Her face flashes on the screen, and I can feel myself relaxing. Hey, Bugaboo. Nice to see you again. What do we know? A lover's quarrel, or at least bickering between friends. Is there a sketchbook or pen the victim is using? Yeah. Akuma? Probably. Thanks. It looks like she's attacking a cheese store now. Circle back and help the civilians get out. Okay? Got it. We hang up and I turn around. Duh. I should have stayed there once I found out the source of the emotion. Okay, Leon. It's my turn to help you out. By the time I get there, the bourgeoisist has given dozens of bystanders blonde ponytails and suits. Okay. So this victim isn't terribly harmful outside of her temper. Ladybug flies down next to my observation perch, scanning the area. Hello, beautiful, I begin. There's no time for that, kitty. Can you distract her? Sighing, I dismount and land in front of the bourgeoisist. What about me? I ask, striking a pose as she flips around and opens her sketch pad. I seize the moment to flip my baton knocking the pen out of her hand. Her eyes narrow, and she grabs me by my hair, pinning me to the ground with brute force before grabbing her pen. I can't see Ladybug from this angle, but I hope she uses her lucky charm before I become a U.S. president with a bad wig. In the meantime, I have to act to save my own skin. And sculp. Cataclysm, I mutter under my breath, hoping to not draw attention. Sliding myself up, I scan for an opportunity. There. I narrow my eyes when Ladybug calls out to the victim, and I know what she wants me to do. I grab the sketch pad as the bourgeoisist turns to her, causing her to yelp in surprise and drop her pen. Ladybug dives for it, and the fight's almost over as soon as it began. Lucky charm! Ladybug yells. And with the flash of light, everyone is back in the outfits they picked out that morning and donning their usual hairstyles. Cat Noir, Leon says, running out to us. Thank you. No more bickering between you two, okay? Ladybug says, making eye contact with him while offering me a fist. I return the usual gesture, but choose to follow her when she takes her leave. Hold on a sec. I say, curiosity getting the better of me. Cat, what are you doing? She sounds bewildered, and I can't blame her. 
What's your name, Ladybug? Your real one. Cat. What about just the first letter? No. She turns away, focused on putting distance between us. Three guesses? Cat. She's growing more irritated. Ariel? Ladybug stops on a rooftop and clicks her tongue. No. Bell? I find my footing beside her. No. I take a breath, trying to sound casual. Elsa? She slips into a laugh. Can I read into it? Are you sure you aren't on the prowl for a Disney princess? We laugh, and I shrug like it's no big deal, but it told me something. She didn't say no. She dodged the question. Have a good day, Ladybug. Say hi to that boy of yours for me, if it's going well between the two of you. She sighs and gives me a parting wave. I'll catch you around, Tomcat. I find my way back to Leon's cheese and detransform in the back, then run into the lobby with my bag of cheese and pretending to be out of breath. Leon and the girl are talking in hushed tones when I intrude, and I decide that's my cue to leave. See you soon, I say, giving them a wave. See you tomorrow, Grist, he calls back. Okay, fair. I probably would be back tomorrow for my greedy companion. Humming to myself, I make my way back home. Do I still miss Ladybug? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. But I can't get hung up on that. For now, I'm going to put one foot in front of the other. Keep moving forward. I set the bag of cheese on my desk and make my way to the shower once I get home. A cold shower always feels best after a fight but I'm a bit chilled from the outdoors already, so I opt to use the water heater instead. I hear someone say something in the room as I finish rinsing out the conditioner, so I shut the shower off and wrap a towel around my waist. Yes, Natalie? I ask, stepping out into the bedroom. Oh! I look to see Ladybug standing by the windows. Oh! I say, returning her greeting. Uh, hi! Um... She's clearly trying not to look at me. I wanted to know if you wanted to... Uh, I don't know. Grab a pizza and watch a movie or something? Sure, I say, resisting the urge to fold my arms across my chest, choosing instead to keep one securely on the towel while the other dangles by my side. But... Uh, yes. Can I put on my clothes first? Her gaze flicks to me, then away again. Of course, she squeaks, turning her back to me. I step into the closet and close the door, grateful for an opportunity to melt. Even my shoulders are burning from embarrassment. I'm not doing anything! I look up to see Plague behind a stack of sweaters. Oh, he thinks I don't know about him using the walk-in closet as a personal dining room. Be quiet, I hiss. Ladybug's here. And you greeted her in that? Plague said, emerging with a slice of Gouda. Meow. I said be quiet. I leave a bit of annoyance in my tone. Okay, okay, I'll cool it, you tomcat, you. So what's the plan? We're gonna get a pizza. Extra cheesy, I hope. I don't know yet. If she doesn't get extra cheese, then you need to break up with her. It'll never work out if she's that kind of demon. I roll my eyes and pull on a cardigan to complete my outfit. I wore this last week in a shoot. So it should look nice, right? All right. I have no taste when it comes to stuff like this. I grab a bottle off the shelf and spray on a bit of cologne. Marinette said she liked this on me, so hopefully Ladybug will too. Oh. Marinette. 
My heart tugs at the thought of her. No, I'm not going to think about that right now. My girlfriend is in my room, ready for a pizza and a movie. There's nothing more I could want at this moment. I open the door and step out, eyes adjusting to the light. Hey there, handsome, Ladybug says, already draped across the couch. I mean, uh, hey there, cutie, uh, model man, sly guy. <laughs> Would you like anything to drink? I ask going to the desk and bringing up a local pizzeria. Oh, why did I call him Model Man? I can barely understand the diction, but I can tell Ladybug's lamenting over her greeting. It makes me smile. I didn't realize Ladybug could be this flustered, let alone over me. So, drinks? I ask again. Oh, uh, juice? Any type? Whatever you'd like. She makes her way behind me as I press for questions about the pizza, eventually ending up with her hands around my neck as she hugs me from behind. It's nice. This is nice. It's been a long day of work, cheese, and an Akuma fight, and there's nothing I'd like more than this moment. It's nice. Do you want extra cheese? I ask. Do I want extra cheese? She repeats, and I can tell by her tone there's no question there. Do we want extra cheese? I say it again for a charm's third count. She laughs and we decide toppings together, and I learn that she's not a fan of sausage, unless I am, and that cracks me up. I don't order it, of course. If dating Ladybug means no more sausage, then I'll pretend it doesn't exist for the rest of my days. And so, with smiles on our faces, we make our way to the couch to wait for delivery. With extra cheese. It's nice. This is nice. We're nice together. And hopefully this evening will live up to that. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 9 is on its way. You can also check out these other videos for more fanfiction. I'll catch you next time.